WrestleMania weekend is right here, and the Dallas area is just going to be chock full with unbelievable events. Not just all WWE. There's so many other things going on with other wrestling shows, Q&As, Legends, WrestleCons. There's just so much stuff, a lot of fun. And Fight TV is bringing you 100-plus hours of all the action and entertainment. So if you can't be there, Fight TV will have you covered. And this is a treat for me because Johnny LaQuasto, part of NXT, ring announcing, many things he did with the company. He's going to be involved with Fight TV in bringing you some of that very fun, very exciting action that's going to be happening with all the different shows. And he's here right now. And Johnny, thank you so much for taking the time. And if you can, give us a little bit more of what you're going to be doing this weekend in Dallas for Fight TV. First off, Jimmy V, it's good to sit with you, man. And uh, it's nice to talk to someone whose name is as Italian as mine is. So <laughs> here we what are. You you I'm German Irish. <laughs> what? Your last name? Come on now. <laughs> I do appreciate the Ray Finkel jersey, though, behind you. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. Yes, there you go. Yeah. That's how we know. Johnny is a comedian. Johnny is a, a multitasker, a man with many hats, wears many hats. And if you know the Finkel back there, you get an A-plus in my book, Johnny. They always laces out. Come on now. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Yeah, we know that. That's for sure. But, yeah, it's it's great to be joining you. And I couldn't be more excited for this weekend. I mean, uh, Fight TV is just the place to go if you want combat sports and especially professional wrestling this week. There are so many amazing promotions putting on shows and the team at Fight, I, I'm so impressed at how they can function on a high level with such little sleep. I mean, this weekend is going to be bananas. I'm going to give a shout out right now, right now to my buddy, Mike Moran, him and his production team are going to be nonstop. I'm going to have to like massage him to keep him awake like a corner man. I'm going to have to like <laughs> give him some water and like a towel and some Vaseline around his eyes because I mean, it's it's going to be nonstop. You know, I've broadcasted many things on fight over the years, whether it be professional wrestling or MMA or boxing, but to be on the fight broadcast team uh, at the fight event center this week, it's going to be, you know, honestly a dream come true because when you when you're lucky enough to work in professional wrestling, your dream is to just work with good people. And I've been fortunate enough over the past 10 plus years, 12 years really, to work with amazing people. And now I can add Fight TV uh, to that list. And what's interesting too is that your background, you mentioned about maybe helping out in other ways. You're also a physical therapist. So I'm wondering oh, yeah. if Fight decided, hey, he could broadcast commentary. He knows what he's talking about. And if, if we need some money work done on our shoulders or our back, we can ask Johnny to help us out there. You know, I've I've lost count of how many wrestlers I have given uh, pro bono physical therapy to uh, over the past 12 years. As a matter of fact, literally less than two hours ago, uh, I dropped off a BioFlex laser, which is an amazing laser apparatus that can fix anything musculoskeletal. I bought one for myself just because I want to have it, you know, as I get older. And I just dropped it off to a, a, a friend who is a very, very high profile wrestler in the business just because this person needs it. And so uh, I'm always looking out for for my colleagues because, you know, professional wrestling, it's physically demanding, mentally demanding. And being a PT has it makes me have an even higher level of respect for everything that happens inside the ring and outside the ring. And that's one of the reasons I love. I love what I do. Um, and that's one of the reasons I take it so seriously. Like, that's why, like, I'm I'm outspoken when I see really bad commentary. And I'm outspoken when I see people on commentary not taking the wrestling seriously. It's like, you have these guys and girls that are busting their ass, that are trying to tell a story, that are trying to have a competition. And when the people on the headset are not showing at that level of respect, uh, it does a disservice to everything, you know? So um, I'm... Very like, yes, I'm a comic, but I completely separate the two. Just because I'm a stand-up comic doesn't mean I'm funny on commentary. Like they are two completely separate careers that I love. But when I get that headset on, it is business. I'm straight ahead. I'm calling it down the middle and I'm trying to tell the stories. Another interesting facet in listening to your answering of the question, Dolph Ziggler, Mick Foley, others have been able to balance or parlay the pro wrestling with the comedy. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. doing one man shows. And they're able to do that as well. So when they have their comedy time, one of man shows, they do that. But when they're doing the pro wrestling, then obviously they're getting their mindsets geared toward that. For you, what made you decide, you know what? I want to get into the pro wrestling business. I want to get into combat sports. Was Does that something that came first or did the comedy happen first? Well, my first love, and, and it's funny, my parents reminded me of this. I think as as young as six years old, maybe seven, I told them I wanted to be a sports commentator, which I don't know how many seven-year-olds even think of that, but I was enamored with watching the Phillies games and listening to Harry Callis. And then uh, as I got a little bit older, then Mark Zumoff came in to call the Sixers. I mean, those are two certified legends that I would get to listen to on a nightly basis. And then, of course, I I found professional wrestling, oh my God, um, at five years old. I mean, my first live event was at the Allentown Fairgrounds and you know, I got to attend a number of live events throughout the year, but then I, I got to grow up watching Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan. I mean, could could I have a, a better team to listen to? And then, of course, there are a lot of other greats. Obviously, Vince McMahon was commentary for a while and Jesse Ventura and, uh, you know, moving on to JR and the legends just one after the other. But for me, it's just something I, I, I guess I've always loved storytelling, you know, and I to me, there was. There's no better form of entertainment than professional wrestling, in in my opinion, because it has a little bit of every form of live entertainment that someone could like. And it's all rolled up into this glorious package that only a select few people can do on this planet. And so uh, I, I never knew I'd have an opportunity, though. Like, I never thought it would actually happen. And, uh, you know, this is where David Marquez comes into play. Um you know, way back in the day, I get uh, contacted by him and he said, hey, uh, you recently shot a project with one of my camera guys. He mentioned uh, you were talking about wrestling. I have a show starting up and I think uh, you might be a good fit. We met for coffee. I knew I was going to agree whatever he asked. And I did. And that's where I started with uh, the United Wrestling Network Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. The very, very beginning. Now they're well over 500 episodes. I was able to be a part of over the first 400, whether it be um, interviews or doing play by play or color. And so it kind of all came about via happenstance because I truly didn't know how to get in the business for what what I wanted to do. And of course, I took a bit of a detour going the healthcare route because at some point you were like, well, I got to be an adult. All right, I'll be a physical therapist. So I did. And then I found stand up and then I found on camera hosting. And then, you know, the chance to do uh, to work in wrestling just kind of came along. And man, it's I couldn't be more grateful for all the opportunities Never did I think wrestling would take me to the opposite side of the world, but it has on multiple occasions. So here we are. Now I'm talking to Jimmy V. (laughs) There's so many, Johnny, when I'm doing these interviews, there's so many side streets and directions we could go when uh, when you're listening to the answers. And the first thing I'm going to do is Julius (laughs) Erwin. I wish I could have seen him play. He was a little before my Sixers time, but I'm a Charles Barkley guy. To this day, he is still my sports idol. I mean, I grew up idolizing Charles Barkley. I wanted to be Charles Barkley. Unfortunately, I stopped growing in height and just grew in width. And unfortunately, that doesn't help your vertical. So, (laughs) (laughs) Barkley grew both ways. (laughs) No offense. (laughs) One of the greatest basketball players of all time, but he grew both ways. (laughs) Oh yeah. There will never be another player who's six, four and a half to that could dominate six, 10 power forwards like Charles Barkley. There's, there will never be another player ever like him ever again. And uh, I'm so glad I got to watch his entire career. and, And now I get to watch him on inside the NBA and with Shaq and Kenny and EJ. It's the greatest show on television. Come on. What a fun show. Yes. I was going to ask you then a detour to that because as someone that's a broadcaster and a commentator, boy, that they all just put it all together and just have so much fun on that show. You don't have to be a basketball fan to like that show. No. And honestly, what what it's about is being unselfish. All four of them are very, very unselfish. None of them are glory hogs. And then of course you have, Ernie Johnson, who's the consummate professional, who is is so well-respected. But then you have Shaq, Barkley, and Kenny. None of them are selfish. They all know they're going to get their time, and they all just play off each other so well. And that's that's what I I take lessons from any any kind of broadcast I watch. And truly, it's about – it's not about you, especially as a play-by-play guy. It's never about me. It's about everything that's happening in the ring. And I just – I love focusing on that. 
Did you ever get to meet Charles Barkley? I came so close one time. So I was a young college student when he was on his farewell tour with the Rockets. He had announced it was his final season and they came to Philadelphia. And through a, a friend of mine, we had a connection to where we got courtside seats right next to Iverson's family under the basket. And this is the game where he tore his quad and essentially ended his career. It was crazy to be there for it. But beforehand, he was signing autographs under the basket. And we had a commemorative Charles Barkley poster they gave out to us. I got it signed by Pat Croce, who was the owner at the time. And I remember I stood up to go have Chuck autograph my poster. And the only time in my life I've ever frozen solid. And I got scared and I sat back down. And I still swear I'm going to meet him at some point. <laughs> He's a big wrestling fan, so eventually, hopefully, the past will cross and you'll get to redeem yourself. <laughs> Putting it out there in the universe. Let's go, Chuck. <laughs> That's the headline. That's the tag. <laughs> wow, you mentioned Pat Croce. Mark Cuban, Pat Croce, these are owners that are just a little eccentric, a little bit. They they beat to their own drum. Just he, Pat Croce was great, too, as far as just – being out there with fans and just yeah. you you grew up in Philly. You had times in Philly. What a what a hard nosed, gritty sports town. What was it like growing up in Philly? Did you play sports? I know then you said you stopped the growth, but were you were you an athlete too growing up? I mean, athlete is a little subjective, Jimmy. Uh I did play sports. I love sports, but no, I was never I was never any good. I mean, I, I tried my best with basketball. I was very passionate about it still into this day. But nah, it was uh, it was never happening. I knew I knew my personality and my voice was going to be my only shot in sports at a very early age. <laughs> Were you the class clown at school? Yes, because I was a fat kid. And so if you're the fat kid in class, if you don't get a sense of humor, you're screwed. So I learned very quickly to uh, deflect away from all the fat jokes and to kind of outwit people. And that's essentially what led to doing stand up. So say this that being overweight actually played in your favor to be able to do what you're doing today and mm -hmm. also you made you took a negative so to speak made a positive plus the other thing too johnny you look in great shape oh thank this well i'm in uh, weird lighting weird lighting but no you're right i mean <laughs> i i attribute my childhood and, and growing up as an obese kid to everything i've done today to a certain extent because I have a theory. If you're a good-looking kid, you're a very boring adult. That's just my opinion. Like, good, the good-looking kids just are just—they become boring adults because they—they they don't have any strife. You know, all the the kids who had adversity and, and the awkward kids who got made fun of who didn't have a lot of friends. We have to develop a personality. We have to know how to survive. So I'm glad I was a, a buck seventy and ate too much tartar sauce. I mean, I'm I'm happy about it now. What is what is Johnny's go-to food these days? Oh boy, go to food. These I got to tell you, um, I've been on a big, uh, I've been on uh, fitness and nutrition coaching for the last three months to start the year off strong, and it's amazing how your palate changes. I've gotten so basic now that cottage cheese and blueberries taste like ice cream to me. It's so weird, but it's my favorite thing. So that's it, right there. That's my dessert. Well, you'll, you'll stay in shape with that dessert, believe you me. So, <laughs> all yeah, right. <laughs> Let's get back. I'll, I'll steer the ship back on track here. Okay. What What has it been like? What was it like for you being able to, how did you land with WWE and NXT and being able to spend some time there? To be honest, it was just perseverance and hustle. Uh, it was one of those things I was never, you hear all the stories. Everyone has different stories. Like I would email them every week or I would phone call them every week or I would send in videos. I, I've never been that guy. I've never, I'm not big on being pushy. It's like, I have enough confidence in my body of work that, hey, if they take a look, I think they'll like what they see. But it was one of those things where, you know, I was working for championship wrestling for nine years, you know, and you make relationships over that time. You know, you make friendships. And of course, a lot of these people end up going different directions and some end up landing with WWE. And, you, you know, the announced team is so small. The opportunities are so little when they open up. And it just so happened that, um, you know, an opening became available in, in 2019. Um, you know, uh, Tom Hannafin reached out to me. I sent a bunch of my stuff in. It's funny because when he asked for some materials, my car had just gotten broken into 
less than a week ago while I was calling wrestling matches. Someone smashed my window and took my computer bag with my MacBook Pro. So I was like, if you can give me a couple of days, I'm going to try to get my, I mean, my hard drive, everything was in there. So, you know, I sent some stuff. He said, all right, cool. Uh, a couple weeks later, had a second conversation. Um, I'm like, great. And then uh, I, I, I want to say it was March 20th of 2019. Um, I was actually on a hospital shift as a physical therapist in my scrubs. And I, my, I hear my, I feel my phone ring. I reached down to grab my phone. I see it was him. And uh, I answered the phone. He said, uh, Hey, I have a question for you. I said, well, I hope I have an answer. He said, how would you like to work for WWE? And I said, if this is not a prank, then yes. And so uh, I started April 22nd of 2019. And like I said, it was just, um, just a lot of hard work. It just, just, you know, never giving up and just always trying to get better and just always having the big picture in mind and, and never getting frustrated. Like, you know, I never made a dime in wrestling for many, many years. And I never expected to because I just wanted to work in wrestling. I just wanted to call matches and and help people uh, tell their stories. And also, as I got a little more experienced, I would help some of the younger people backstage, whether it be trying to come up with a promo or character ideas. Like, I love working with, you know, younger talent. It's it's one of the coolest things in the world. And so um, at WWE, I was only there for a year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. Um, but I got to wear every hat possible with a microphone in that year. I mean, and to, to look back on it now, I didn't take a second of it for granted, but there's still some moments I look back on that are hard to believe they actually happened to the same little kid who used to marvel at the television set when we used to steal a uh, legal cable um, and watch the pay-per-views with our hot box. Yes, we've, we did that. It's okay. Hey, a lot of people did that. There's no, no worry about that. You're, you're fine. Yeah. We're all good. We had the black button and the red button. Black button meant you got to watch the pay-per-views. It was awesome. And during that time, I mean, we can go down a, a list, but I'm just thinking off the top of my head, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, the giant Omos, mm -hmm. uh, just some of the ones who comes to mind during your time there with NXT. Oh my gosh. It's amazing now because it's such a different world in comparison, you know? Um, you know, I, I got to be there for, you know, Rhea Ripley defeating Shayna Baszler in a, in a classic for the, you know, the NXT women's championship. I got to interview Keith Lee right after he became NXT North American champion. Um, you know, Adam Cole was champ for a majority of my time there. I believe, yeah, I believe. So you look, I mean, now a lot of that talent is all over the place, just crushing it. I mean, one of my closest friends, uh, Swerve, look at him now, taking the entire world by storm, justifiably so. He's one of the most talented people in the business, and it's about time he got recognized for it, you know? And I'm, I couldn't be happier to see everyone finding their success, whether it be in WWE or whether it be elsewhere. Because our, our, our time, all of our time comes up at some point. None of us expected April 15th, 2020 to happen. And I think back on, on that time, I mean, we, we didn't, no one knew what to do. I mean, the world was completely shut down. The world was scared. So many of us got a call that day. You know, I'm just grateful that not only did I, I get through it, but now I'm, I'm able to work doing what I love again. It took a while. I mean, I, it, was a, <laughs> it was a long time before anything started happening again. But um, I'm really grateful to be back doing it again. And I'm, I'm grateful for every moment I had there. Being there for that one year made me so much better than I was for the previous nine years. It's amazing how much I learned there. And I credit that to the entire announce team, everyone that uh, I worked with, uh, from Tom Hannafin to Vic Joseph uh, to Michael Cole to Andy Shepard um, to Alicia Taylor, the entire team, uh, they're phenomenal, you know, and I couldn't say better things, you know. One of the most fun shows of the year is the NXT Halloween show. Oh, and I'm just curious. Did you wear your scrubs at any of those Halloween shows? I only did one Halloween show and I wasn't even scheduled for it. I specifically asked to do it because my parents were flying into town. They flew in that morning as well as my brother and his girlfriend. So I wanted them to see my parents came to TV the night before the Halloween show was on a Thursday. So my parents got to see what Full Sail was like and, and the whole TV production. They loved it. So I really want to do the Halloween show. And so whoever was scheduled, I just asked them. I said, hey, is it cool if uh, you take the night off? They're like, yeah, go ahead. And then I got it okayed. And, uh, you know, there was a giant panda. So there was a battle royal. There was a uh, – I don't even know what they called it. Um, the Halloween – 
costume battle royal or something where people were dressed as different wrestlers like uh jonah dressed up as rikishi i believe um i, I don't even remember all the costumes but then the Rhea guy, ripley was triple h yes but i can't remember who was who the guy was that was china <laughs> Ooh, i don't, I don't it remember was, but it was funny it was I, funny what the, <laughs> yeah and then the one guy dressed up as a massive uh 15 foot panda and he struggled to get in that. So I'm sitting there at ringside taking secret videos. I'm like, I'm never going to see this again in my life. There's a massive panda competing in a, in a battle royal. It was the greatest <laughs> night and so goofy. Oh I, remember God, Johnny, I remember that night, too, at the old vent center in Orlando, mm -hmm. which is a little place. But what a, what a nice place to have a show and great crowd. Yep. The NXT superstars were signing autographs before the show. They did a costume contest for fans. Rhea Ripley came out to take pictures with the winners, the kids. She's the best. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. And but also I remember you mentioned what was it? It was it was Rikishi, but it wasn't, but it was I can't remember what he called himself. It was a different name to go. Was it do you remember what it was? Because he didn't he didn't call himself Rikishi, even though he dressed up like Rikishi. Oh, oh man, because I don't remember if he had become Bronson Reed yet or not. I think he was. Maybe Reed it was Kishi. That's yeah. it. You did it, Johnny. It Reed Kishi. Yeah, yeah, it could have <laughs> been. Did the whole thing. And at the end of the night, who comes out but Scotty Too Hotty? Because he's working for NXT. Yep. And they did yep. a whole with the glasses, and Mia Yim came out. There were, oh my, Keith Lee we came out, and they did the whole thing with, with Reed Kishi. <laughs> And uh, I get to work with Scotty again in less than three days, so I couldn't be more excited. Isn't that something? Because what you you got to let us know too. Because I was reading the information that Fight TV sent over to me, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a hundred plus hours, and you and others. I yeah. Sonny Ono is going to be there. So Cal Val is going to be there. You're yes. going to be giving commentary during that time. Do you know exactly what you're going to be doing, or just that? Hey, you just got to be ready and give commentary at different events. Yeah, it's going to be a great team. Uh, Josh Chernoff will be part of it. Uh, Ian Riccoboni. I mean, it's a really good squad of people. And so essentially what Fight TV is doing, it's really smart too. On the front page of Fight, uh, fight.tv, you don't have to pay a dime. You go to that front page all throughout Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's essentially going to be live broadcasting from the Fight Event Center at WrestleCon uh, nonstop. And so it's almost going to be like a rotation. There's going to be different hosts throughout these different times. And you know, you never know who's going to show up. That's the coolest thing. It's it's almost like a never ending, really fun podcast episode to where you don't know who's going to be walking in from WrestleCon, who's going to sit down with you. You don't know what kind of uh, shenanigans are going to happen. And it's all free for Fight TV. And of course, while we're there, we're going to be letting you know what events are coming up, what broad, because like I said, Fight TV is, is producing 22, I believe, as of this week, 22 live wrestling broadcasts over the course of this weekend in Dallas. So it truly is your one-stop shop for all things professional wrestling. If you cannot make it to Dallas this weekend, our goal is to make you feel like you're there with us. Like anytime I'm talking to an audience, I want them to feel like they're sitting in the living room. I want them to feel like, you know, they're, they're right there at the table with us. That's the goal is we want to make you feel like you're right there, even if you can't be in Dallas. So fight.tv has got everything this weekend. I would think too, with your background, that that, plays itself into your hands well, because just in case there are surprises, special moments that happen, yeah. you're on your guard and ready to handle something like that in the big D. Man, I sure hope so. I, <laughs> you never quite know what's going to happen in wrestling, but yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate to have made a lot of amazing relationships over the years. And so I'm, I cannot wait to see so many people that I haven't seen in a couple of years or longer. You know, I, I can't wait to catch up with friends and uh, I can't wait to meet new people and I can't wait to to interact with fans as well. It's it's a long awaited event. Obviously, the last couple of years have been very tough on everyone for various different reasons. And so for me, this weekend is is truly a celebration. I mean, I, I'm getting an Airbnb with a bunch of friends and I just can't wait to hang out and just spend that time because if the pandemic taught us anything, it's that time is more valuable than anything else. And when you realize how things can be taken away, you want to take full advantage of every second that you have. And that's why uh, I honestly am so excited about this weekend. Well, I'm going to give you a couple more questions. We'll wrap this up. And I appreciate so much 
your availability and your time to do this is so much fun for me. So I appreciate it and hope fans enjoy it as well. Same here, me too. Okay. Johnny, what does Triple H mean to you? He just announced his in-ring retirement, and we all know about, unfortunately, the health issues. Yeah. But obviously such an integral part of what NXT, before 2.0, what NXT branded into, USA Network. What did he mean to you and, and to be able to work with him? It was very surreal um, meeting him for the first time and then realizing, oh, I'm going to I'm going to see him at television every single week, you know, and we didn't really, we didn't have a relationship. Look, he had so many things to do. And I, I was a very small cog in the wheel, if you will. Um, but I'm glad that he is taking control of his health and he's got to do what's best for him. He's got to do what's best for his family. Everyone does. And unfortunately, you know, in a business like this, we all get to a point where maybe sometimes we have to move on and thank God he survived. Because apparently it was a very uh, difficult and, and dicey situation. So I'm very, I know it's sad that we're not going to see him in a ring again and possibly never, not even on television again. But as a healthcare professional, it makes me happy to know that he's taking control of the situation and that he's making the right decision for him and his family. Because I know he wants to live a long time. And taking this step is helping assure that he will live a long time. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was really cool to, to shake his hand and, and say hi to him and, and make eye contact. And, you know, there were a couple of weeks where, uh, they needed a television interviewer. I primarily did the interviews back, uh, backstage. Uh, then I would do the live events and then play by play on 205 live. But there was, there were a couple of weeks where they didn't have an interviewer to do TV interviews. So I, I had about two or three weeks where I was like the television interview before Mackenzie Mitchell took over. So I still have those couple of weeks where I was on USA. I got to do an interview with William Regal, which is come on now a couple with William Regal. Like that's to me, that's a victory. Like I, I've, I got to share the screen with one of the greatest uh, ambassadors for professional wrestling. And, you know, uh, one day I got to pick him up at the airport and take him to TV. And we went to a steakhouse and he threw down two steaks like a champ. Something I couldn't do, but he's William Regal and he can do it with ease. And so there's just little moments like that that I, you just never forget that you're so grateful for. I mean, first time I ever walked in the arena to do 205 Live, it just happened to be in Philadelphia. The arena I'd been going to since high school. I mean, it's the arena where I watched the Royal Rumble in 2004. It's the arena where I watched the Sixers. And it just so happened I had to fill in for Tom that night. And it was in Philly. And just walking down that ramp, knowing that was like my city that I lived in in college. And I'd been there so many times. So many surreal moments. Every time walking in an arena and, and rushing down that, that ramp, because we had no time between SmackDown and 205. It was like hustle, hustle, hustle. It was the coolest thing ever. So a lot of amazing moments. Well, you mentioned William Regal, and I'm going to loop to that. But when you mentioned Philly... And you're mentioning the 76ers and then going to wrestling shows and then being a part of one there. Who do you remember seeing as a fan when you went to the shows? You mentioned a Royal Rumble. Who comes to mind for you that you were able to see live and just you were very much excited about and into as a fan? Well, as a kid, it was always the Allentown Fairgrounds and then it became Stabler Arena at Lehigh University. So I remember there was one event. Well, I remember my first event ever. The main event was JYD and Outlaw Ron Bass. And I don't know why, but, the, and I don't even remember this. My friend that I went with, we, we caught up, uh, you know, recently because we still stay in contact. And I brought up, the, I found the, 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 pay, the poster from that night. And, uh, and he goes, yeah, do you remember the main event? It was like two minutes long. I was like, no, I don't remember that at all. He goes, yeah, man, I don't know what happened, but the main event was like two minutes. I'm like, oh, I, I was just uh, blown away by the spectacle of it. I don't even remember that, you know, but. I got to see Undertaker uh, at Allentown Fairgrounds. And I remember there was a show at Stabler Arena. And I don't know what happened. My guess is someone must have been having travel issues. This live event went well over four hours. And I, I saw the same people multiple times in the same night. I think it was Yokozuna that may have been getting there late because he finally was in the main event. So there are a lot of really, uh, really amazing moments like that. Um, the Rumble 2004, if I recall correctly, that was a. Uh, I remember Lesnar defeating Hardcore Holly um, to retain a championship. And the Royal Rumble, 
not going to mention because uh, if you look up who won that one, there's a reason why I'm not going to mention. It. Yeah. And that's perfectly OK. So, yes. oh, my gosh. And you mentioned William Regal. And for those we're talking about pro wrestling and we're talking about a lot of things. But William Regal, speaking of Fight TV, is going to be part of a super show mm. for fans, a Q&A with Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett. Eric Bischoff and the pod father, Conrad Thompson. And that's going to yeah. be April 1st. And Fight TV is going to carry that for you too. So you can order that as well. There's so many, so many things yeah. are going on. And Fight TV is bringing that to you. And that's going to be a lot of fun with them talking about pro wrestling. Their story's fun and interesting as well. That's worth the price of any admission right there. And that's the coolest thing about this weekend. Not only can you watch for free on Fight.TV all the broadcasting that we're doing, but there's multiple packages. So if you go to fight.tv, it's got a list of everything that you can choose from. So it's full entertainment for the entire weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, I can't wait to be a part of it. So if you love professional wrestling or if you're a casual fan and you want to see what the world is like, maybe outside of WrestleMania, go to fight.tv, buy yourself a package, get some friends. Trust me, it's going to be truly something special and you're going to see so many different shows so many different promotions and incredible talent across the board and we're almost done here johnny you did an excellent job going through all the questions in our little side streets our roadways mm -hmm. that we're rearing and turning on hey this is a quick one ever met billy joel are you a fan of at the song allentown <laughs> no i've never met billy joel and he didn't know what the hell he was talking about when he wrote allentown but <laughs> There it is. There's that's, that's another headline. It's another tag yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, great song. But no, he just, I think he rode through on a bus and just looked out and saw, oh, smog. I'm going to write a song. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And as far as combat sports and MMA, what things, what things are coming up for you in the future? Are you going to be doing any comedy sh clubs, comedy shows? Are you going to be doing any MMA work? Do, is there anything on the table or in the works? Yeah, I, I, talking with a couple different promotions uh so i can't really say anything concrete but uh, as far as boxing goes i signed on with uh, undisputed promotions they're out of orlando but they are growing fast and i could not be more excited to be a part of their organization uh, i did their last pay-per-view and man it was a packed house incredible card it was live on fight and so they're doing amazing things so i'm very excited to be continuing with them and so uh yeah it's you know it's it's like with anything you just keep putting yourself out there you just keep getting the work done and you make more and more connections and so i'm excited for the rest of the year right now though all i'm focused on is dallas because that's going to be busy a lot of caffeine <laughs> <laughs> plenty of caffeine you're going to be starbucks out of the yin yang i think or whatever they have out there oh mm -hmm. my gosh so johnny pro wrestling broadcaster mma broadcaster pro wrestling mma interviewer comedian licensed physical therapist mm -hmm. voice actor Throw yeah that in you're right as well for you you've got that, a really yeah. good voice too and do you do do you and i'm not putting you on the spot because don't need to but do you do voice characters or is it just more using your voice to do some voice acting a little bit of everything so um it, it depends on what the audition is but my voiceover agency does deal with a lot of video games and animation so I'm very grateful to be with them because they send over some really cool auditions, whether it be a video game I've never heard of or an animated show I've never heard of. Just having the ability to kind of come up with ideas for certain characters is really fun. Now, obviously, I have a range that I think I'm best at, but at the same time, it's nice to have the challenge. And then, of course, I do a lot of freelance voiceovers as well. So, um, yeah, man, I, I, I try to have the, the, the more range you have, the more jobs you're going to get. And lastly, by the way, during my shows, there are no Don Jardine alerts here, everybody. So we're keeping everything on the QT. So lastly, Johnny, we go to pop culture. Oh my gosh. Will Smith, Chris Rock at the Oscars. Now you're probably too young for this. I remember Andy Kaufman, Jerry Lawler on the Letterman show and, and their whole thing. And that was, we ended up finding the man in the moon, Jim Carrey, by the way, also Finkel and Einhorn, but and that and that movie as well that other movie mm -hmm. but the, but anyway man on the moon we find out the behind the scenes but what are your thoughts of just what happened at the oscars did you think that it was first of all scripted or something that they planned and then all of a sudden oh my gosh maybe it's not you know it's funny i was on a flight 
during the Oscars, and I thought we had turbulence, and it turns out it was just the slap that you know reverberated up to the sky and shook our plane for a little bit. Uh, you know, I lived in Los Angeles for a long time. I lived smack dab in the middle of Hollywood for over a decade. The only message I can honestly say is Hollywood is so stupid. I, I, I all I can tell you is don't be fascinated by celebrity culture. It's so dumb and it's so over the top. And it's, it's just silly. If you love movies, love movies. If you love music, love music. But, but don't get super connected because you don't know what's going on in these people's lives. I mean, that was ridiculous. To me, it looked a hell of a lot like a work punch. I mean, Chris Rock no-sold it like a champ. I think it was just adrenaline taking over to where Chris knew he was on national television and couldn't uh, be affected by it. But if Will really hit him that hard, and this is a guy, look, I also idolize Will Smith as a kid. I mean. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, love them. And really? I still love, yeah, and I still love Will Smith. I don't know. There was obviously something going on in his life. There's something that's been bubbling underneath to cause that kind of reaction. And uh, to, to Chris Rock's credit, he's going to get a hell of a lot of material out of this. I'm sure he'll be working it out at the Comedy Store very soon, at the Comedy Cellar very soon, and uh, it's going to be very fun to watch. Well, if they ever book Will Smith versus Chris Rock, I want to see Johnny call in the match. He knows what's going that's on. A, He'll, be doing it. He'll be there. That's a Triller Fight Club exclusive right there. Hey, Johnny, <laughs> thank you so much. In closing, and we we talked about it, but is there anything else you'd like to say about the big weekend coming up? I'll let you have the last word. We'll wrap it up. No, uh, you know, anyone watching this, thank you very much. And thank you, Jimmy, for, for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, fight.tv this entire weekend. Go there right now. Check it out. See what it is that you want to purchase. As far as if you want to find me, I'm at Jay Quasto on social media, uh, J-Q-U-A-S-T-O. And if you want to watch my comedy special, it's streaming uh, for free right now on Roku and Tubi, Sling TV, and Zumo. Uh, just go to QuastoSpecial.com and you can click on any of those links.